Assalamu alaikum everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so everybody could hear me. This is Mahfoud Al Farqani. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you all for joining us again in this series of talks organized by ETC in collaboration with the Human Resource Staff Development Program. It is really nice to see uh, all our colleagues as well as a new participant joining these sessions. Welcome everyone. Few reminders before we begin. The session will be recorded. Questions may be raised at the end of the discussion and kindly keep your speaker on mute. Uh, our guest speaker for today is currently a PhD researcher in artificial intelligence and machine learning at Sultan Qaboos University. He is also working as a senior manager for information and communication technology at Transom Handling. After a journey, started as a developer and Ministry of Education to grow to act as head of data administration section. Then, he moved to Oman Medical Speciality Board as a senior developer and acting assistant manager, ICT. Later, he progressed to another sector, Oman Airports, at the head of application development before finally moving to Transom Handling. Join me, please, to welcome Mr. Yunus Al Ankudi. Mr. Yunus, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mahfouda, for the intro introduction. And I hope that I will add uh, value to all of you. Inshallah. Well, today we have two sessions today and tomorrow. We will the data science. Uh, yes. Um, Yunus. Yeah. Uh, the voice is getting uh, uh, disconnected. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, so we'll talk about, we'll have an introduction and then we'll talk about data, data science, and we'll touch on a, the open data. Before we start, I have a question to the audience, just to share the views and to, to know the level of the audience. What is the data? Anyone can, can share? What is data to you? What do you, what do you understand when we say data? Any variable that is measurable, doctor. Good. Another? Raw information. Very good. More views. Maybe it is a symbol, letters, or numbers, but it has no uh, meaning, specific meaning. Very good. It, uh, it is a fact and uh, statistics that collected together for reference for analysis. Wonderful. More? Collection of facts and figures. Very good. So I think we have um, maybe a, a, a common understanding of uh, the, the, uh, the, the data, as the data is all around us. So in the introduction, I would, share, I would like to share the global digital growth. As you can see around you, um, digital has been around us increasing. Maybe in your life last year and this year, we've been using things in digital. You never thought that you will use it. Reflecting that to the, to the, uh, to the world, we can see that the population of the world increased by 1%. 1% means more than 81 million. And that reflected on the unique mobile phone users. Number of users increased by 1.8%, more than 93 million. And the number of internet users around, around the globe increased by 7.3% which means three, uh, 360 million new users added to the global use of the internet. 
the active social media users increased by 13%, 13.2% in a total number of around 500 million. And from this slide, we can see the increase, the level of increase. Last year, it was a jump, almost, almost double the, uh, the, the figure from 2020. We reached more than 4 billion, 4 billion users around the globe. It means more than two thirds of the population of, of the world are using the social media. And here we can see some kind of uh, uh, statistics about the use of the social media, social networks. And social media is one of the one of the source of data, as we will see in the, in the version. One source of data that is getting more attraction, more attractive to the uh, to the data scientists, as uh, the social media provide lots of ungoverned uh, data where everyone can express what what he wants to express without being social media is not the only platform who is growing now we have and because of the pandemic maybe you've seen in Oman and maybe in the university yeah, itself maybe you've seen that lots of fewer courses were delivered over the internet which means more market to the to the uh, e-learning E-learning in two, 2019 increased by uh, or has a market share of 16 percent. And in 2020, we've seen lots of curriculum gets digitalized in digital platforms and uh, were, were provided to the people through a digital platform. Now, today here in Oman, we can access colleges and universities around the globe, not just in Oman, not in the, in the Middle East, even in China in Europe and in, in America. E-commerce from its side also increased, and this statistics focused in the uh, in the GCC. And we can see in Oman, there is a level of increase of using the e-commerce. Me, myself, I experienced using the, uh, so the e-commerce last year because of the pandemic. I didn't use it before, and last year I used it, and I was amazed why I did not use it before. There are sectors in the uh, in the uh, e-commerce where more used or more attractive to the users uh, to purchase and get products from. And this statistics shows us that electronics comes in number one. Uh, fashion and beauty, toys, digital services, food, digital music, and furniture are, are in the top top list of procured. Um, uh, goods through the social media, through this, uh, the e-commerce. But that doesn't mean that humans are the only people or the only contributors to the uh, data creation or data generation. We are not the only people or the only, the only on, on Earth or on, on the world who create data. There is a new thing called IoT, Internet of Things. And Internet of Things contributes much to, to the data as these devices are connected and push logs to the to the databases continuously. As and you can see in this statistics, we can see a rapid growth in the number of uh, global active IoT connections, active connected devices in, and each device is generating a continuous stream of which also contributing to the uh, to the global volume of data that we have, which according uh, as I, th I think about it, it's a it's a national treasure. It's a treasure. Having data is a treasure. Enable us to do lots of research, lots of investigation to improve people's people's life. And in this statistics, uh, the statistic shows us the amount of increase in data creation we're talking about uh, we're talking in the level of data we're talking about level of zeta byte and if you don't know what is a zeta byte you will have it, you will have it in the right side showing us what is a zeta byte and in 2024 we will be generating more than or around 150 zeta byte 
uh, of data, amount of data. You can see the increase, and this one, the increase in, in the uh, generated data is justified, justified by the jump in uh, the capabilities of, of the network, uh, in the cellular network and the internet, uh, internet capability, and uh, on having the new devices, the uh, slim mobile devices that uh, generated access to more people, as we've seen in the previous uh, slides of this uh, presentation. So because of that, because access get more easy to the people, people are contributing more and adding more data to, to the uh, global network. And added to that, the IoT, we have now today lots of lots of data, which if we got access to it, will be a treasure of information. But data is not 100% accessible to everyone. We can access data which is in the service, web service, uh, and the data which is uh, publicly available. We can access it and we can get access to this data. But then the deep data and the dark data, only the authorized people and the hackers will have access to it. Uh, for, for sure, the hackers are not uh, authorized, but they will they will be trying to get access to the data because of the value that they can gain out of the information that they can collect from the deep and dark web, which is illegal. <laughs> Examples of that in your life. Now, uh, every individual of, of us has a uh, multiple records in the in in in, in our man, for example. I remember 2007. We, we were discussing in IoT in uh, in the uh, uh, what do you call it? ITA. In the ITA, we're discussing the civil record, civil person record, which will include the civil information, the civilians record, they, they call it. The civil information in ROB, medical information in all of the hospitals connected, your education, your habits, your behavior, your relations, your belongings, and by that, there will be a digital twin of you, of every person. There will be a digital twin, which is very much up to some, some level, very much alike of your real person, personality. And this digital twin is a critical if we continue sharing the data and without governing our data, if we continue sharing the data, especially in the uh, in the social media, that will create a problem because this data will be publicly available to the social engineers, with which are they are a kind of hackers who are using information to uh, gain leverage over you. Because of that, we're seeing now lots of cases in uh, in, in the uh, and digital crimes in the courts and all of that because of the because of the ungoverned share of data i mean this one this one the ungoverned share of data is one of the one of the causes which if we controlled maybe it will reduce the number of, uh, of crimes around the world or, uh, number of digital crimes now trends around data is a is not it's not just a thought um, that amateurs are, are saying or people who are interested in you know, on data saying it's a global trend global trend for the business it, it from a service to be a, a business by itself now if we can see from gardner reports we have lots of technologies running around the data now if we said we talked about the digital twin, for example, and we looked at the digital IoT platforms. But all of these, all of the technologies are, here are um, gaining more value when they have more data. When you have data, you will be able to conduct lots of deep neural networks. And one example for it in the neural networks, for example, the um, voice recognition. Now your Siri, maybe we will be able to recognize your voice without being training. Google Translate, for example, when you open it, you will not need to train it. You will not need to train the Google Translate 
uh, on your voice, your volume. There is no need to train it. Your accent, you don't need to train it. Previously, if you remember, if anyone used a similar platforms for translation, you will need to read some set of uh, list of uh, phrases so the machine or the program recognize your voice. Today, you don't need to, to do that. You, today, you can speak in any uh, accent and you can translate to any language without needing to uh, train the, 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 the machine. Why is that? Because all of the data now is available publicly in uh, social media. And when you enable, when you enable the device, your device, your mobile device to listen to, uh, to you, around you, then it's learning your way of speaking and customizing your uh, experience in, the, in these platforms. We'll jump to the data. When we talk about data, generally we have two, uh, two different types of data, structured and non-structured. Previously, most of the data that we've had structured data in the systems. If we focused on the systems, we are saying the systems similar to the ERB, similar to the ERB modules that are <clears throat> finance, supply chain, inventory, all of these structured, structured on tables, on rows and columns, so we know what's exactly on this, uh, on the on the data on the database. And because of that, they call it quantitative data that contains numbers and vol and values. From these numbers and values, we can create we can create reports, and uh, from the reports we can learn about the uh, the history. For example. Uh, if there is a, a request to know the performance of a company, then setting a KBI, for example, setting a KBI of, um, let's say, reducing the cost by 10% from the finance will be able to know if the cost was reduced or not because the data is structured. Using uh, the structured data is, uh, has a good use in machine learning and drives machine learning algorithms because you will have numeric values from the numeric values the machine learning can uh, if you if you have the features you can uh, inject the supervised algorithm and you will learn what uh, and you, what's in the in the database in the other side the unstructured data which is a qualitative data that contains audio, video, uh, sensors. For the sensors, say it's linked to the IoT because the IoT it's more like devices that collect data using audio from your uh, from your uh, speaker, video from your CCTVs, sensors, motion sensors, for example, and more. It's used in more in natural language processing and text mining because. It's not structured, like for example, a PDF a text in a, in, a, in a book, for example. You want to find how many times a word was, um, uh, appeared in, in that, in that uh, uh, text. And based on that, maybe you will learn more about the personality of the person. If we link the two, for example, the Twitter account, if you link to a machine learning and neural network uh, uh, algorithm to a Twitter account of a person, you will be able to know lots of things about his personality and his behavior. And here is an example about structured data. Structured data is all about systems. You have lots of features, lots of function, functions. Maybe you would integrate it to multiple systems by, uh, by the end of the day you will have all of your data in a central uh, storage uh, in a central storage uh, that contain structured data tables columns and uh, fields rows records other side the unstructured data you will find it in twitter you will find it on instagram you will find it on facebook uh, all of that data that you don't have a rule how to write the data. You don't have a, uh, let's say, a master data 
maps, what kind of information that you can select or add. Here in the social media, anyone can write anything uh, using any language, any slang, any way. So there is no one way uh, agreed on that. This is the way that you should do or write or say or have video uh, that everyone share. Everyone, every diff different single person has a different way. That's why it's not a structured data. Now, having having this idea to make use of the data that you have, and if you allow me, I will be speaking more business than academia. Uh, for business, you will need to have a data management capability, and these capabilities will have to know will have to know what they are looking at. They have to have a, an understanding about the the scope and focus of the organization. For example. If a company works in aviation, the team will need to understand what is aviation. If the company works in logistics, then they will need to know what is logistics. And this is what makes more value from the data because then you will know the insight. You will know the meanings of the, of the data when you extract it. Then you will need to have processes and methods. You will need to have a life cycle of the data, how to, to generate it, how to govern it, and then you will need to have a plan to retain it or to archive it. Uh, if the data is uh, structured, you will need to work on the uh, structure, data structure. You will need to have it aligned with the information structure and technology structure, structure so you capitalize your, your outcome from it. Then you will have the performance to measure. To measure, if you are getting what you think uh, you are getting from it, accurately or not, then having the measures will enable you to 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 judge if you are getting the value, if the business is getting the value from the data or not. Uh, we've seen examples in the in Oman uh, about companies, about organizations who empowered data and improve their productivity more than 50% because of the data. Some of organizations, they have lots of data, but they don't know what to use about what to, what to use it for, and they don't know how to utilize it. They just have data. This was their ultimate goal. They don't have the next step, making use of the data. Once the organization decide to make use of the data, then they will need all of these expertise, tools, and techniques, techniques to make it happen. Data management is, a, uh, is an iconic role in the, in the data. If we don't manage the data the right way, then as we say in the, in the IT, garbage in, garbage out. We need to have a very clear governance framework for the data. We need to have a, a, a neat uh, architecture, which enables the data to be clean all the time. Me, having the data, clean all the time means that we don't have null values. We don't have values that uh, makes doesn't make any sense. Because of that, we have a databases, database management systems that enforce the governance framework and enforce having rules in the inserted data. Having master data again enables the organization to minimize the number of text the number of entered text, which is a, more like uh, unstructured. If you have master data, then uh, your, uh, your entries in the system, in the, in the structured uh, database will be more like numbers, more like IDs, more like codes, which, which is more easy using the numbers, the codes, more easy to generate reports to validate the quality and control the quality. Um, in data, when you uh, work on it, you will find that one system cannot last alone. Integration is a big, uh, big thing in in the uh, uh, in the data. And sometimes you don't just integrate within the organization. Sometimes you need to integrate your system with multiple organizations. For example, if we thought about the civil or the civilian ID, or the civilian um, uh, uh, the civilian record, for example. 
If the custodian of the civilian record is the government, then they will need to integrate with the civil service. They will need to in integrate, integrate with the with the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education. So everyone will have access to his scope of data. But the citizen himself will have access to all, all of his data. Having all of this data will require data warehouse. Data warehousing is a concept that makes a, the data uh, have a, a fingerprints or let's say prints through the uh, time time scale so you can see the progress on the data an example uh, about that for organizations if, if we said an organization need to measure the number or uh, the percentage of harmonization if they need to measure a number of harmonization what is their percentage of harmonizing the uh, uh, the jobs in the organization they will need to have a record April 2019, the number was like this. May, it was like that. So we have different figures, uh, snapshots about the uh, about the data, about the fresh data, about the operation data in the data warehouse. So when we have uh, the, the capacity of uh, satisfying data, then we can uh, create the dashboards, transforming the data and uploading it to uh, a digital or digital business intelligence platform that can be displayed to decision makers so they have better understanding and better position to decide based on an informed data. This will take us to the data science. And in data science, data science is a, it's a practice of mining data. And the key strength of it is identifying patterns and extern extracting uh, actionable insights of them. For a data scientist, uh, data science includes lots of statistics, lots of uh, inference, understanding the, the scope and understanding the meaning of the data. It will require computer science skills, productive analytics. Without analytics, you will see data, but you will not be able to link the dots. Machine learning algorithms, having this ability to do to um, to uh, generate models and algorithms, so you play with the data. You look at the data from different angles, and then you will need to have an understanding of the new technologies to uh, to gain this insight about the big data. Um, in the data science life cycle in the right hand side, we can see the life cycle starts in, in the business understanding. So before we touch the data, we have to understand the business. What does it mean? What is the, the value of the business? If we had a, an industry, for example, education, let's say education as a business. What is the business, business of education sector? The business of education sector is to educate people. To, um, to boost uh, literacy among the com community, among, among the people. So we have to understand that. We have to understand the business that the organization is, is serving. In aviation, the same. In the logistics, the same. Medical, we have to understand that focus. We have to understand that business. Understanding the business then will enable us to understand the data. Now, through my career, I worked in medical, in medical education and aviation. And in all of these organizations, they have a system, they call it CIS, uh, the SIS, SIS. For education, it's system, student information system. Uh, for, uh, for aviation, it has a different meaning. For medical, it's have, it has a different meaning. So understanding that, insight yeah, will enable the user to translate the meaning of the data, if, especially when you look at the, ma the master data. Then you will be able to understand what, what delay means in medical, what, de what delay means in education, what delay means for aviation. It has different meanings. Then understanding the scope, understanding the business, having the data will enable you to clean it. When you see a data, which is not matching, not matching the data that you have. A null value, will you accept a null value? Maybe yes, maybe no. Depends 
depends on the on the uh, on the industry depends on the case that you have in your hand maybe a null will be a, a feature you never know then you will have to explore explore the data after you clean it you need to explore it to understand what feature inside it what features that you can use and utilize to understand more about the data and as understand or, or uncover use that features to uncover patterns a well-known example is the weather now for example saying if today is humid humidity is a more than 90 percent and the uh, the temperature is around 30 degrees centigrade will it rain this is a very straightforward uh, example but if we complicate it again more, if it is humid, if humidity, for example, 90 percent, it's 36 degree. Uh, will the flight be delayed? Will we have a delay in the flight? Um, if we, again, another example, let's say using the same features, humidity and temperature, will there be any traffic going from uh, from uh, al khod for example to to uh, matrah all of these questions can be uncovered covered based on the data that you have if you have the right data if you are asking the right questions then you will be able to see the right patterns and then yani learning from the patterns that you have then you will be able to predict you will be able to create prediction model predictive model and based on the data that we have we have, let's say, a million record saying that when when it's April and humidity is 90 percent and temperature is 30, 30 degrees, flights will not be delayed. So we learned that. So when we predict uh, according to the data that we have today, will we have delays? Prediction says no. And that value saying that no, you understand it, but then you will need to share it. To share it, you will, have, you will need to have the data visualization skills where you can communicate the findings to, to people. Now we'll, we'll take two, two parts of the, uh, of the data mining. We'll have data preparation and uh, exploration, and we'll look at the modeling, modeling part. I hope that we have time. Um, for the data preparation and exploitation exploration, it's very very much critical because based on based on the work that you do do here, if the do, the work that you do here in the preparation and exploration, uh, uh, correct, then what comes after it will be more correct. The most important skill for it is data science in the in the data science most important skill is to know how to prepare the data and how to explore it it takes more than 70 percent of the data scientist time it's time consuming you need to you need to explore you need to clean you need to uh, prepare you need to extract you need to transform the data uh, to uh, to make it more attractive to make it more attractive to our data science uh, or to even for a machine learning for a machine learning algorithm or model. This involves transforming the data. Why? Because you will not uh, in all of the cases that I worked in for more than 17 years, we did not have a clean data that fit what we want. We will need to clean the data and transform it in a way uh, that can be uh, uh, more workable in a machine or in the data science uh, project. That will enable you to uh, extract the right features again, and then you will be able to remove the noise, which is the anomalies in the data, un un unwanted uh, data. Maybe you will be able to, to transform it to uh, to a way in a way serve that uh, the purpose that you have this is the first part the second part because we're fasting and my throat getting more dry i'll give you a video let's enjoy this video for three minutes
about the modeling. There is no voice in the video. Uh, there is no video, Mr. Yunus. It's just a slide. Yes, it's the video within the slide. Without voice? There is a Without voice. Us. You can't hear? No. no, we hear nothing. Maybe you didn't share the no, no, voice. No. Yeah, there is no voice. It's our only, it's our conversation. No then no, I will skip this one. Anyways, it's talking about the, the modeling part, which we discussed in the video. Now in this slide, we're, um, there is a confusion between the data science and business intelligence, because business intelligence has been in the market for more than you know, four years, four decades, and people know data analytics and know business intelligence, and they can see the value that business intelligence can provide. But machine or data science is the next level of it. Data science is the next level. The main thing, the main difference between the business intelligence and data science is business in intelligence is using the historical data to give you facts about what happened, about the history. So when you say, how was our performance last year? Then you will get the performance from the performance records. How was, uh, what was our uh, uh, profit last year? Then you will get that from the historical data. Where in data science, data science can learn also from the uh, historical data, but then it enables you to predict, to see the, view, the future. If you have the same circumstances in the future, then you will be able to see the future, to predict which is more useful tool for planning, for future planning. Now, uh, business intelligence has been used uh, in previous years heavily in some of the organizations for planning. Uh, saying that we, we did that in that year, in this year, and we've got uh, the, these results, so we should improve this part, so we'll get better effort. Which means human were thinking to do the task of data science, but they were doing it um, manually, out of their, out of their thoughts. With which, the, uh, it creates a chance that they miss, misinterpreting the data. Maybe they will scope the scope that they will focus on maybe one year or two years, whereas in data science you can inject the data of 50 years if you have, if you have this capacity, 50 years or more. Uh, I can say that because, because in Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health, we you used to have data uh, more than يعني, uh, 40 years. Here in Oman, in other countries, they have data for more than 100 years. So when you have this amount, this capacity, this level of data, human will not be able to, uh, to see or to um, review all of that capacity. With the data science, with the machine learning, they can do we can empower the new technologies so they serve us better. And this one, as I see it, this one is the main, the main, the main difference. The data, the, I mean, the business intelligence can look at the, uh, the history and tell us what happened. Whereas in the data science, it's also looking at, looking at the history, learning from the history, but then it can tell us what will happen or what could be happening in the future, which is a very great value for 
um, for planning, for strategic planning and forecasting. Now, if anyone is interested to, to be a data scientist, here is a list of uh, skills which will enable the person, enable you to be a good data scientist, which by the way, the number one data scientist is the number one paying uh, or salary in the world. If you are a truly proven data scientist, then you will be the most expensive person on the planet, even sometimes more expensive than the CEOs. Um, one, um, one group of skill, which is the dom domain knowledge. The domain knowledge is the, the one skill that um, maybe will limit uh, people in uh, some domains. If you, if you learn math, you have math, you have programming skill, you have com uh, communication skills, but you don't know the domain, then you will be limited. You will need to know the domain. If you don't know aviation, learn about aviation. About aviation. If you don't know logistics, learn about logistics, and that will enable you to empower your skills in different domains. And by the way, now learning the domain, learning the domain is much more easier considering all of the materials that is available online and the experts that are willing to, to share their knowledge uh, through the uh, digital platforms. An open data is for, for a strategic um, nationwide uh, uh, strategy to empower data. Open data plays a vital role. Let's say, for example, we have uh, in the university, in your uh, respectable university, you have 100 data scientists, or you have this major in your uh, curriculum and you're, you're planning to give them uh, a, a project to uh, utilize the available data. Now here, the concept, which, which is the, the citizen data scientist, which means that anyone can anyone can empower his skills um, to utilize the data. Now, when we open the data to the public, open data like that, this will enable us to have, instead of one point of view, we will have multiple points of view. And this leads, uh, leads us to, to the box. Always when the group gather for innovation, people are saying, think out of the box. Now the box is your domain. Your domain is the box. You need to think out of your box, out of your domain. Similar to uh, the example in business, um, the salesperson, the salesperson uh, methodology for the as, as, as an example. The story of it, a group of architects had a, a meeting for two weeks to solve an architectural problem, which they couldn't. And they ordered pizza. When the pizza boy came, he delivered the pizza and out of a joke, they wanted to make fun of him. And they asked him to solve the problem for them. And he did because he was thinking in a different way. As a salesperson, as a delivery boy, he worked in the, on the streets. He can see all of the urban different buildings. So from that, he created a sense of architecture, which he shared. So he was out of the box, out of the architecture box, but out of his artistical uh, thought and his understanding and the knowledge that he built from visualizing the buildings in the city, he solved the problem. He came from out of their box. Because of their box, they were not, be able, they were not able to solve it. Now, if we enable the data for the people and the people who were interested to uh, discover uncover what's in these data, I think um, we will have much value uh, learning from the best for the future. And these are, uh, by the way, this is a website, data.gov.om. Anyone can access and you will have access to all of the available data. And uh, some part of these data, you can download it on Excel sheet and you can play with it, uh, discovering or uncovering uh, uh, the um, insights on the on the data, which is it's publicly publicly available on the website, and that's it from my side. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be able to I will be open to try to answer it for you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Yanis. Please unmute yourself for any question. Arma, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Yunus, for the informative presentation. I just want to have uh, one question about the how to start. Like, for example, if you want to start programming in artificial intelligence and uh, like uh, motivate the students in their course projects to use artificial intelligence, what do you recommend us to use? And uh, yes. it's like it is easy and uh, they can uh, quickly understand it. OK, now. Uh, for artificial intelligence, we will talk about it tomorrow, inshallah, and I think it will be interesting. Uh, when it comes to machine learning and artificial intelligence, when you show the students examples and what people similar to them achieved, they will be more interested. I've seen that in Sultan Qaboos University. We've, uh, we've done uh, multiple runs of um, projects that uh, engaged people not from computer science but from different uh, colleges and we showed them multiple examples and they get got interested in it and then they worked by by themselves uh, on these projects one team from college of engineering came to me here in the in, in the Muscat international airport and i gave them a task to build a machine learning algorithm that controls the passenger bridge automatically using computer vision will move without using a human, human inter interaction. And they did that. It was very interesting to them. So show, showing the people examples, I think it will create this interest to them. How easy or how uh, complex it is, I think with the new generation, their, their generation is more um, lit literal to, towards digital. They understand digital more than me, more than يعني, our generation. So I think it will be very easy for them because it's a, it's 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 very close to them, very close to the to the uh, mobile apps that they use, very close to the mobile devices that they use, to the smart TVs, to the um, cars that they drive, which is full of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, and that maybe will enable them to um, to start digging and investigating ways of replicate, replicating um, uh, success stories like what we're, we're seeing here in the uh, in the background. Thank you, Mr. Yunus. Now, until we have the second, uh, the next question, I will add, um, for for machine learning and artificial intelligence, maybe it's a very يعني, for us um, it's very fancy words and uh, very scary and complex. It's artificial intelligence, it's machines, it's a terminator and all of these um, يعني, words. But when we uh, start when we start investigating, start looking at what is a machine learning, it's nothing but a Python language or R that most of the code is ready for you. Most of the code is on libraries um, that you can import and start to use day one. You don't need to code it. You just need to know what you want to do with the data. And with all of the libraries that, uh, that are available, publicly available and growing every day, people, communities of people around the globe are adding more libraries to uh, to the Python library, for example, to R, to C sharp libraries uh, every day. And it's accessible online through communities, from, through their website, through, uh, for example, Python data science website. And you will have lots of, lots of information, lots of uh, data, lots of algorithms ready to, to be used. Now maybe from another angle. Um, now maybe the economy is uh, facing kind of challenges. Uh, it's not just in Oman; it's all all of, over the world. Most of the successful uh, uh, nations they looked at information technology. We have Singapore, for example, a good example. We have uh, China, 
a very good example, empowering information technology to uh, boost the economy. We can do the same with a simple app, with a simple app, with a simple technology. We can be the next Facebook or be the next IBM or we can be the next uh, WhatsApp. A very simple app, a very simple technology embarred with the uh, technologies, AI technologies. And machine learning can can be the next uh, big thing in the world. You never imagine. Maybe one of your students tomorrow will be uh, yeah, the next uh, billionaire, the, ne the next Bill Gates. Maybe you can motivate him, motivate him uh, in this way. It's creating opportunity for, for the people. Yeah, data is always uh, valuable, but people not, cannot uh, 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 give the right value to the data without knowing all of this. Uh, let us see if there is more questions. Sharifa, uh, Sharifa yeah, there is one question from Sharifa. Yes, Sharifa. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, actually, um, thank you first of all for the good presentation and uh, the knowledge you shared with us today. And I would like just to uh, get uh, one extra uh, information with regards to the social media platforms data. You said at the beginning of the session, we do have numerous data behind these platforms. But how we could extract these data? Yes, if you shared, uh, if you searched in the on the Google, for example, for uh, Twitter API, you will have a Twitter API. Through the API, you can gain access to to the data, providing some kind of uh, key uh, key or key um, uh, what do you call it parameters. Um, another way is to email email Twitter or email Facebook to give you your data. They will extract it and they will send it to you. A third way, there is a feature in some of these uh, um, social media uh, platforms enables you to download your data. There is a feature to download the data. So maybe you can Google, Google how to download, how to extract the data. Uh, maybe that will be only one easy way. If you want more detailed data, uh, Google, um, they have a platform of uh, data, data.google.com. Through, through that, maybe you'll be able to look at some public, publicly avail available data sets. It's another source. But if you are focusing or targeting one person or one account, the account owner can request the data or request the access to the, to the ABI and through him, you will get uh, access to the data. Thank you. Yeah. Are there another question? Yeah, there is another I just, question. I was, I am wondering about like, you know, we have lots of information on the internet, on the websites and for example, in YouTube and the social media's accounts. Can we consider this as like, uh, uh, the uh, big data and can we extract like if I want some information one information can I just extract it from the all of these uh, places for example from the websites and from the YouTube or uh, from the social medias yes so big data is a bigger concept I mean data science can be empowered can be utilized to um, to look at the data available in a big data platform. But big data is a different term. Big data, it's a different term. And here, maybe in the in the screen, we can see the level of data that people can have access to. Now, whatever data that you can access through Google or through the website, it's in the web, it's on the surface. It's accessible, it's publicly available. You can access it. You can, maybe you can request the uh, the admin to give you access how and he will give he will give you there are two more layers and he down uh, and deep the uh, the ocean for example the deep web where not everyone has access to an example for that uh, the um, intranet 
Now you have, in, for example, the, in the university, you have an intranet. You have a network inside the university. You don't have access to it from outside, but you have access inside. This may be an example of uh, a deep net. The computers, the professor's computers in the, in the university, which is not in the deep, but in the dark, you want to hack them to know your marks, but don't do that. So, but you can get the marks if you requested them. So these are levels of data, levels of accessibility of the data. Collectively, the data exceeds the, uh, the uh, zeta byte that we talked about. And uh, it's more, more than that. The zeta byte, maybe it's only on the service, but what's in the deep, you can multiply that by 10 or maybe, maybe 100. We have lots of platforms, lots of uh, devices contain data which is not accessible to everyone, but accessible to authorized people. Now, this uh, surface web data, I need to get the permission from them in order to take the data from their website? Depends. If the, if the data is publicly available, like in the website I shared in open data, then it's an open data. You can download it and use it. But if the data, for example, a, uh, an, an, an annual report uh, of the performance of one of the companies, it's uh, the insight of the of the data is available in the website. You can see the graph, but you don't have the records. It's not uh, published published in the website. You can request it, and they maybe maybe they will they will provide it to you. So in order to use them, I need to download the information first. Yeah, of course. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yanis. You're welcome. Uh, we'll just wait for another questions. We have just four, four more minutes. Okay, let's just see. It was really very interesting uh, session. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Uh, I have a small question if you can address Mr. Yunus. Yes. Hello, yes, can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am uh, basically a bio biotechnologist, a biologist. Could you enlighten any applications of data science when you relate it with biology? Yes. So or what uh, type of uh, what type of coordinated research can be carried out between IT professionals and biologists? This is the idea Just of data science. Of applications. <laughs> yes. So anyone anyone who is expert in any domain can be a data scientist you have the potential why because you have you have the, the fundamental or the the um, the required the required domain knowledge the other skills you will have part of it then you will be able and if you can see the screen now the slide that i'm sharing the other part of the skills you can build it on you you can use any language like python c sharp uh, you can use these languages to develop your own model. So there you are, must for have example, good programming are, skills, are, you mean to say? Again? You, you mean okay. to have good programming skills you must have, right? Yes, that will make you a better data scientist. Okay. I mean, you can use any tool. You can use any tool. There are, there are multiple tools, and you, like Kiwi, for example. You can upload your data, and you can use any algorithm there and you will get something, but you will not be able to confirm if that thing, the result is what you are looking for or not. Oh, but when you build yeah. your own models, then you will have a full control, a better control of the, of the model outcome. And then you so will be able be to change. For it, we, it be better if we go for a collaborative research than uh, individual. That's also possible. But then yeah. uh, you have the basic, you have the fund, the, uh, the needed um, level of uh, knowledge to be a data scientist, which is the domain knowledge. Again. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're Have a good day. Same. Thank you very much. Any more questions, please? Okay, so it's only 
we already reached the end of the session. Please be reminded that tomorrow will be the second session for Big Data and Machine Learning with uh, Mr. Yunus. At the end of this talk, once again, join me to thank our guest speaker for an enlightening and interesting presentation on Big Data and Machine Learning. Thank you very much, Mr. Yunus. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to meet you tomorrow at the same time. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Inshallah. Ma'asalamah.